I want to talk to you this morning for a few minutes on the topic of faith in uncertain times. Faith in uncertain times. Boy, that, that's really an understatement, isn't it? We're living in uncertain times right now. Um, so much craziness that's, that's going on in the world, and we, we think about the future. What does the future hold for us as, as individuals and as a nation? So many things that, have, that are happening globally and nationally and in our personal lives that can really uh, set us, you know, in confusion and, and uncertain about what tomorrow will bring. So I'd like to take, take a few minutes to talk about that faith in uncertain times. It's when we can't see ahead that we're glad that we know the one that does see ahead. Amen. And he's guiding our life. And in uncertain times, we need a faith that's going to hold us and anchor us to our future. Faith, when I talk about faith, I mean bold confidence in God. And I trust that if you don't have bold confidence in God, that God's going to give you bold confidence. It's interesting how that, to me, um, how many know we need problems? We need problems. How many have problems right now? <laughs> and you're looking at me, what do you mean we need problems? I'm trying to get rid of these problems right now. It's interesting how that we, we you know, worship is a phenomenal thing, isn't it? We come into the presence of God and we enjoy this and man is good, you know, and you know, we like Peter say, it was good for us to be here. But then we got to go home. And we've got to confront some uncertainty and things that are not like they are in church. You know, everything in church seems to go right, doesn't it? And, but not so when you, when you get home. And so, how many know we need problems? Because if God only worked when it's good, man, we'd, we'd have a, we, we would have a problem. Because how many know Jesus said, you, in the world you're going to have tribulation? And it's in those turbulent times where, where, where things are uncertain. That we need the kind of God to step into that kind of situation when, when all else seems to fail. That we have a God that intervenes in our circumstances. That we have a God who not only intervenes, but sometimes He doesn't take us out of the fire, but sometimes He brings us through the fire. And the Bible says that when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it's a, it's a wonderful thing to have a God that, that takes us out of the fire. And sometimes it's a God that takes us through the fire. We have a God that is here for uncertain times. And today I want to look at just one verse of scripture for our text. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to read this together. Could we do that? The Bible said Paul instructed uh, the, the church to, to give attention to the public reading of Scripture. And I, I don't know if we do that enough. And so today, I want to do that. And I want to do that for a specific reason. Because there are some of you that are going through some real uncertain times. There are some very difficult moments in your life right now. Some of it has to do academically. Some of it has to do with your, uh, your, uh, your job situation. Some of it is in your marriage. But whatever it is, he's a God 
that will get us through uncertain times. And so what I'd like to do, I want to read this scripture because I want you to get it into your spirit. I want you to get it into you and see what God is saying to you personally. Take this verse personal. Would you read this with me? Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What a, what a promise from God. What a promise. Let's pray, shall we? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the next few minutes, I pray that you will speak to every heart, that you will speak to every life, that you will come as we gather to hear your word and that your word would bring strength and healing and, and deliverance and health. That your word would bring conviction for those that need Jesus Christ this morning. Draw us to yourself. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is an important verse of scripture. If I can give you a little bit of the background. The, the children of Israel at this point in their history were in Babylon. They were being held as exiles in Babylon. God had spoken to the children of Israel because they were wayward and they had strayed away from serving God and that he would allow their enemies to come in and to, and to bring them into captivity. And the Bible teaches that the Babylonians came in, burned down the city of Jerusalem, uh, took a whole slew of, of, of believe, or the children of Israel and herded them into Babylon and made them captives. They were refugees in a strange land. And they were uprooted, they were lost, they were in a culture that was foreign to them. How many know right now, it's interesting to say this, but in the United States of America, this is a very hostile culture to, to the kingdom of God. It's a different time when I was growing up, you know, uh, even, even, uh, listen, even the bullies sang, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I'll never forget, I won't call his name because he might be watching online right now, if you're watching. We had, Sunday was an interesting day because, you know, we all, I, I lived in a neighborhood where we all went to school together. And I'll never forget this, this group of two or three guys, man, they were. They were bad. They were bullies in school, but come Sunday, <laughs> oh, dressed to the T, you know, big smiles on their face, you know. And, and you know, for somebody like me, I would, Lord, don't let Sunday end, Lord. <laughs> let Sunday continue for a long time. It's a different time right now. It's a time when, when people don't recognize or care about the things of God. It's, it's a day when uh, legislation is even uh, crafted against our principles. We're not, I don't want to talk about that because that's not what my message is about. But what I want to talk about is that we're living in uncertain times. These, these are perilous times. It's contrary to our Christian culture. And that's the way the, the, the children of Israel were in a society that was contrary to their culture. Strange land, strange God, strange practices. And in the middle of this upheaval that they were going through, God sends the prophet Isaiah with a word to them that says, do not fear for I am with you. Isn't it good to know that when we're confused and we don't know what to go, where to go and what to do, God steps into our situation in our crisis to tell you, don't fear, I'm with you. I'm with you. If you're going through some difficult, God says, do not fear, I am with you. Don't be dismayed, I'm your God. You're not alone. And God reminds the children of Israel, you ready for this? He controls the chaos. Isn't that strange? So, sometimes we look at chaotic situations and say, where is God? He's right in the middle of it. He controls the chaos. He knows how to manipulate situations for his benefit and for yours. 
In the midst of that chaos, he says, I am your God. And it was an invitation, though they were still in captivity, it was an invitation to the children of Israel to know and to understand and to see God as active on their behalf. Listen, God right now is active on your behalf. And what I want to do this, this morning, for you that are online and, and you that are here in the sanctuary, I want to give you three, uh, three ways that we can anchor our faith in these uncertain times. Three ways to anchor your faith. Let's look at number one. The first way to anchor your faith in these uncertain times is by standing on God's promises. Now, when I was a kid, I, I don't know if, if you've experienced this. In our church, when I was a teenager, I got saved when I was a teenager, they used to have these little boxes, these little red, they call them promise boxes. Anybody remember that? This is a, this is a new group. Where you guys been? You, it's a new group. It's a couple of old people raising their hand. I got you. Thank you. We used to have these promise boxes, and then, and then you would go in there, and every day you would look at a promise from God, and it would make you feel good, and then you'd stick it in the back, and then every, there were promises for every day of the week, every day of the year. How many know that the promises still exist? They may not be in that red box, but I want to say to you this, that the Word of God the Bible, the Word of God, is just that. It is the very words, it is the voice of God to you. Now, I don't know if you've ever, you know, Pastor David uh, here at the, at the campus and, and also in some of the, our other campuses when we have Sunday morning services, sometimes you'll see the gifts of the Spirit in action where uh, the Lord may give someone a, a word of knowledge the Lord may give Pastor David a prophetic word for some people. You've experienced that when you've come here? And what, what happens is Pastor David may, may um, call somebody out and, and, and say, you know, the Lord says this and that, and, and it's just right, as you, uh, it's amazing, it's just right on target because it's the word of the Lord, you know, and it's God speaking through his servant. And I remember that when I was younger and I used to see the gifts of the Spirit, I said, I wish that were me. I wish they would call me out. Did you, anybody ever do that? And, and so you put on a, a, a bright lime green shirt. <laughs> you come to church with a, you know, if you ever see the Met game, they have these signs that they put up. You come with a bright green shirt and, 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 and the big sign, pick me, pick me. And somehow or another, you're there and the prophet looks over here and says this. And the prophet, and you, you stand up with your lime green shirt. How many of you know, I, I, got, I got great news for you. God has a word for you today. Today. Yeah. Yeah, God wants to speak to you right now, today, in this moment. That, that within your iPhone... For some of us, and within your iPad and on your lap, you've brought that great book that we call the Bible. Some of us use it just for inspiration, but I'm here to tell you that God wants to use it to speak to you. Amen. The Bible says this that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That word quick doesn't mean it's fast. What it means is this, that the Word of God is alive. You have something living on your person right now. When you put that book on the shelf, there are words in that shelf that are alive right now. And God wants you, as you open those books, not just to read it to get inspiration, but to get a word from Him personally. God wants to speak to you. If we're going to anchor ourselves in these difficult, uncertain times, we've got to get a fresh 
appreciation for the word of God and the promises of God. And the thing is, it's not just getting those I love you scriptures. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I need to know God loves me. God so loved the world. Oh, I love that verse. My favorite verse of scripture. Everybody have a verse of scripture that's favorite? Mine is all things work together. For good. Ah, uh-huh, yeah. I-, I love that. I love that verse. But I liken the Bible to a meal. And when I was a kid, my father would, would put out a meal and then he'd sit over the table with a belt. Those were the days, my friend. And the reason why he'd sit over the table with a belt because there was not just the rice and the beans and the chicken. There was also the asparagus. And the dreaded peas and carrots. I'll tell you, I dread peas and carrots. And my father made sure that we didn't only eat the rice and the beans, but that we ate the asparagus and the carrots and the peas. So I devised the plan. I I came up with a scheme. I have my plate. My father wasn't looking. I push the peas and carrots to the edge of the plate. So instead of being all bunched in together, I pushed them to the edge of the plate and it looked like they, that, that I had eaten them. I got away with that for maybe one or, two, one or two days. Now was it. Then I had to eat peas and carrots. How many know a lot of believers, and I'll say believers, we want to eat the, 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 we want to eat the, uh, the, the, the rice and beans. Mm. We want to eat the fried chicken. We want to eat, uh, you know, all that good stuff that, that really, you know, the dessert. We can't wait for the dessert. But the Lord says, if you're going to stand on my promises, then you've got to eat the peas and you've got to eat the carrots and you've got to eat the, the asparagus. How many just love the book of Leviticus? Come on, raise your hand if you love the book of Leviticus. Not too many hands. Book of Leviticus, tough book. How many of you know it's an important book? You see, if we're gonna if we're gonna stand on the promises, we've got to stand on all the promises, not just the ones that we like, not just the ones that make us feel good, but it's all of it, the full counsel of God, and all of God's people said, "Thank you." Don't don't get don't get quiet now, me. Charles Spurgeon said, God is too wise to be mistaken, too good to be unkind. And when you cannot trace his hand, you can trust his heart. See, in in the true analysis of our life, God always has the final word. Always. You are going through, we're going through, I'm going to put myself, we're going through perilous, uncertain times, but God has the final word. I'm so glad I'm on his side. I don't always do it the way he wants. I don't know, but I'm glad I'm on his side. He has the final word. And even when you don't think anything is happening, how many, don't raise your hand. This is, don't, this is not a raise your hand moment. How many of you are going through things and you wonder, Where is God? You ever get to that place? God, where are you? Nowhere to be found. I remember one many, many years ago, I was broken. I, I, was, I was going through a situation in life. I got in, I had a van back then. I parked my van in a very secluded place. And I just broke down. I wept before the Lord. I said, God, where are you? It gets like that sometimes. I love what the songwriter said. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. 
He's doing something right now. I know it's dark. I know you may not be able to see. But right now, while you're standing here and all the pain that you're going through, God is up to something. God is doing something right now. He never stops working. Why are you people making me preach now? Don't make me preach. I'm trying to... You guys that are online, God is up to something in your life. It's not what you see. It's who you trust. Who you trust. Corey Ten Boom says it this way, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. You see, what happens is in these times of darkness and you can't hear God, He's stripping away from us everything that we depended on that wasn't Him. And sometimes it takes uncertainty and darkness and a crisis to remove all of the things that we've clung on to. In the midst of that, he says, don't fear. I'm with you. The American Psychiatric Association put out a report this year. Listen to this. This is an amazing stat. I'm going to go backwards. Though. I did it forward the other day, this, this morning. But in 2022, 32% of United States adults, 32% in 2022, said they were battling anxiety. 2023, 37% of adults said they were battling anxiety. 2024, this year, and it's not finished yet, 43% of adults say they are battling anxiety. That tells me that there's somebody here in this room that you're battling anxiety. Anxiety about the future, anxiety about what's going to happen, anxiety about whatever, whatever those anxieties, you're battling that today. But I have good news. God said, do not fear for I am with you. Amen. How do we anchor our faith when the future seems unclear? Number one, we stand on the promises of the word of God. Number two, we seek God's presence. We seek God's presence. You see, God's not distant. God is not distant. He's here. He, he, he allows us sometimes to go through dark valleys so that we could pursue him greater. He said, I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I'm reminded of the story of Elijah the prophet. If you haven't read this, you need to go and you need to read this particular story. It's found in 1 Kings chapter 18 and chapters 19. And the story goes that the children of Israel had parted from God. They were far from God. And the, the prophet Elijah came to the nation and said, How long will you stand between two opinions? If God is God, then let's follow him. If Baal is God, then let's follow him. But we can't be between two opinions. And so we're going to have a contest on Mount Carmel. And he brought the nation to the mountain with the 450 prophets of Baal. And he said, the God that answers by fire, he will be God. Now, of course, the, the, the 450 prophets of Baal said, we got this. You know, because Baal was the God of fire. So they were like, you know, we got this. We got it. We got this is an easy one. And they set up the altar and they, 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 they put the, the, the sacrifice on it. And then they started real happy. Oh, Baal. Come on, Baal. Let's go, Baal. Let's do your thing, Baal. Baal, Baal, Baal. 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 Come on, everybody say Baal, 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 Baal. And he wasn't showing up, though. I don't know how long it took, but they're getting, they're getting discouraged now. You know, after a while, you start calling... Say, oh, come on, Bill. Come on, you could do better than that. Come on, Bill. Help us out. Nothing. And finally, the Bible says that they, they got so desperate, they started cutting themselves as, as an offering. Let me, maybe I'll offer some blood to Baal. Nothing. 
And finally, you know the story. For some of you who know it, Elijah said, okay, let me, let me do it. He reset the altar. He put the sacrifice on the altar. He built a trench around the altar. Then he said, bring water and fill that, fill that sacrifice. He, they doused the sacrifice with water and more water and more water until the water filled the trench. And Elijah prayed a simple prayer. God, let your fire fall. And the Bible says that fire came down from heaven and it consumed the sacrifice, the altar, and the water in the trench. Listen, if Jesus can turn water into wine, God can turn water into lighter fluid. How many know that? Yeah, yeah. And you would think that Elijah would be so happy that he would be thrilled. Hey, we, we, we won this one. But Jezebel, the wicked queen, said, I'm going to kill this man. And he ran for his life. I want to tell you something that I've experienced in my years of walking with the Lord. Sometimes your greatest victory will alert your enemy to come get you. Do you hear me? Sometimes, if you're not... If you're not on guard, you better be on guard because sometimes when you have the greatest victory, the enemy comes in to try to swoop underneath you and undermine what God has done in your life. And the Bible says that Elijah ran. In fact, 1 Kings chapter 19 says he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he got to the mountain of God. He, that 40 days, that's a long time running. And the Bible says then he went into a cave and spent the night. The, the message version says it's so powerful. It says that he crawled into a cave. Some of you have crawled into a cave. You're depressed. You're, you're angry. You don't know how to feel. You've crawled into... You don't want to be around people. You came this morning to honor God or somebody invited you. For whatever reason, you're here, but you, you really didn't want to be here this morning. You, you've crawled into a cave. And in the middle of that, God speaks to him. I love when the word of the Lord comes. And you know, the interesting thing is, I would think God would say, come on, Elijah, you know how much I love you. Come on, Elijah, I, I, got, I got your back. Come on out of there. Come on, do right. No, God said to, you know what he said to Elijah? He gave him what I, what I call a rebuke reminder. While he's in this cave, God says to him, Elijah, what are you doing here? May I submit to you, some of you have crawled into a cave of depression and fear and anxiety. And God is saying to you, what are you doing there? Behold, I am with you. I will help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to know if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, you've never given your life to the Lord. He's brought you here this morning because he has a plan for your life. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now. Right now, God is speaking to you and he wants to draw you near. He wants you to come. And before this service is over, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. A.W. Tozer, the great writer, said, when you cannot hear God, you will find that he has trusted you in the most intimate way possible with absolute silence. Not a silence of despair, but one of pleasure because he saw that you could withstand even bigger revelation. You see, when God is not, when you got your problems, but God's not around. When you're in that situation where it's everything seems to be uncertain and, and God's nowhere to be found. He's trusting you in that silent place. Because God wants to grow you up. What if the circumstances that you're facing right now, what if they were meant for your good? What if it's God that's trusting you with a difficult situation? 
See, oftentimes it's difficult to hear God's voice when you've already decided how he's supposed to respond. You, you follow me? We got an idea. This is what I want God to say. And he leaves us in silence until in the silence we say, Not my will, but thy will be done. And when we get to that place of seeking, of finding him, we find that God was always there all the time. How do we... Anchor our faith when the future seems unclear. We stand on his promises. We seek his presence. But finally, we surrender control to God. Well, I heard a lot of amens to that. That tells me something. I love to be in control. How many people love to be in control? Let me, let me see your hands. God bless you. God bless you. God bless your honesty. Bless you. Lord, deliver them. Bless you. Bless you. I love to be in control. You know, when you come in my car, I'm driving. When I come into your car, I'm driving. I love to be in control. You know, and, and there's something about being in control that makes me feel like I got, it, I got everything in, you know, in, in check. How many know that's an illusion? We try to control the outcome. We're like the boy uh, with, the, with the finger in the dike trying to control the outcome. We put his finger there and another one busted open. And he went over there and another one busted open. The other night I was going to a, a function that I was invited to. And I put my GPS on. Now I know basically how to get to where I was going. It was out in Long Island. I knew basically, but I wanted to make sure I had the fastest route. So I put my GPS on and... As I'm going on the GPS, it's telling me to take the express road. Now, my experience on Route 80 tells me that if I'm taking the express road to George Washington Bridge, that's the one that always gets jammed up. So I'm not taking that express road. All right? So I'm, I'm going to, it doesn't matter what the GPS says. I know where I'm going. I'm taking my way. Isn't that what we say to God? God is saying, take this way. No, 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 God, I know how to get there. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great the heart. I got you, but I got this one. And the GPS kept saying to me, yeah, 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 take the express road. Now, I couldn't, see, the express road hadn't come yet, right? I could only see, I, as far as my eye could see, it looked like, like that, that side, the, the local roads were empty, as far as I could see. How far can your eyes see? Can you see beyond what God sees? Do you have greater insight into what's ahead than God? Well, I repented. I said, ah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to follow the GPS. Grudgingly. I'm following the GPS. Get on the expressway and I'm flying. And I'm waiting for the traffic. Nothing, the traffic is happening, but it's happening on the local road. Will you trust God for uncertain times? Can, can you allow him to put you on a road that you don't want to go on? Because how many know he knows better than you? I know we're, we're pretty smart in this house. We've got educated people. We've got career uh, professionals. We've got people that know their stuff. But how many know that God sees ahead of you? He sees what's down the road. And if we're going to walk with God, we've got to surrender control to God. Cannot be, Lord, not your will, but my will be done. No, it can't be that. We've got to surrender control to God. You see, faith is cultivated in the middle of what we cannot control. 
Do you hear that? Because when we can't control it, we've got to turn to God. Do you realize why some of you have a lot of problems? Some of us? Because God's trying to wrestle control of your life from you. So he can get you to where you need to go. Man, Pastor Robert, that was a great thing you said. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm walking with God for a long time. And I, I can tell you right now, I, sometimes I can't figure it out. I just don't know. I think I know. But if I let him control, I'll get to where I need to go when I need to be there. Oswald Chambers, Oswald Chambers said this, Faith never knows where it's being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. Back in the hymn book, and I'll close with this. There was a song, and I don't remember the exact name of the song, but I know the, I know the lyrics. It says this, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know he holds my hand. Hallelujah. 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 Can you trust him? Can you allow your faith to rise?